massage nerds. Today I'm going to be bringing you the paraspinal muscles. Paraspinals means they're next to the spine. So you've got two sets. You've got the erector spinase and the transversal spinalis. We drew one set of each on each side, but they really are all on the same side. So that's six muscles. They're the deepest muscles in the, uh, you know, on the back next to the spine. So you've got your iliacostalis, which is laterally right here. And then you've got your longissimus. Longissimus for long, it, it inserts all the way to the, uh, to the occiput. And, uh, um, and then you've got your spinalis, which are really close to the spine. So these three right here are the erector spinase. And then on the other side, we drew, well, Miriam drew, <laughs> the uh, transversal spinalis. Transversal because they're a little more transverse. If you notice, the fibers here are long. The fibers here are a little more diagonal. So you've got your multifidi, multifidi, and they're like one inch long, and then the uh, rotators, and then the semispinalis. These three make up the transversal spinalis. And the way I know it's a lot of muscles, what we've done really is these are below the trapezius, the rhomboids, and the serratus superior, I mean superior, posterior. So those have been removed. So that's already like five layers right there, guys. So these are really deep. And the erector spinase lay over the transversal spinalis. Like I said, they're both on the same side, but we drew them on opposite sides just to show you. So as you can see, these fibers of the erector spinase, they're the ones that help you extend your back. Like after you tie your shoes and you come back up, these muscles help you extend your back, bring you back to uh, anatomical position, or like when you bend over to pick up a heavy luggage, you know, so if you have somebody that hurts their back and they tell you, you know, they went traveling, it's probably from picking up that heavy log luggage. So you want to check the erector spinase. The transversal spinalis are for rotation. So these are like when you reach in the back of your car or when you reach to grab your seatbelt and put on your seatbelt or when you have bad posture. I had a client just this week that came in and, you know, she's got real bad ergonomics at her office. She sits at her desk right here and then uh, her monitor is sideways. So she's constantly doing this, which is what rotation. So she had some mid back problems. So then I, now I know I need to check the transversal spinalis because these are used for rotation where the erector spinase are used more for extension they extend your back. So in order to palpate them, like you can feel like the spinalis, you can feel them like, can you extend your back? Lift your head off the table. You Okay, I could really feel her engaging these muscles. Okay, relax now. So if you want to make sure you're on the muscles, you can ask your client, you know, to uh, uh, extend their back because this is what the action of the muscles are. So I like to start, like I said, no oil. First thing is dry work, you know, and just doing a little bit of stretching, especially for the transversal spinalis. You know, you just kind of want to go transverse. Just some, some nice stretching. You can hold on to the ilium right here and then just stretch the muscles with your the palm the palm of your right hand and hold on with your left hand to the hip and really just start doing some myofascial release and look at the iliacostalis you know it's really laterally so you want to go one inch at a time and just really start stretching stretching it out and you can do that to the other side. Oh, I forgot to tell you what's a good way to remember the names of these is I love spinach. I mean, I mean, I love spaghetti with red meat sauce. So I for iliacostalis, L for longissimus, uh, S for spinalis. So that's the I love spaghetti. And with red meat sauce would be the rotators for the R, the multifidi for the meat, and the semi-spinalis for, you know, uh, sauce. So I love spaghetti with red meat sauce. So that's 
that's an easy way for me to remember all six of them. Because remember, these are really deep muscles and you must work them. So once you've done a little bit of stretching and even, you know, going opposite, one of the techniques I like to do is I get my fingers and I'm going right to feel for the spinous processes. And you know we don't work directly on the spinous processes. Why? Because the rotators and uh, multifidi, they... Uh, they insert right on the spinous processes. And if you work over the spinous processes, you can cut those little fibers right over the spinous processes. So you don't want to go on the spinous processes but right below it. So one of the techniques that I do is I get on this side of the table and pull towards me, like I'm separating, like I'm scooping out, separating the fibers, the insertions, of the rotators and the multifidi and the semispinalis. This is very specific work. And while I'm here, I'm going to work the opposite side, pushing away, pushing away from the spinous processes. and just go all the way up. And you can see some of these, you know, uh, insert way at the occipital ridge and the mastoid process. So I also have my tool here because sometimes I want to get really close. And this is a good way to get really close. You feel for C7, which is the most prominent, and then you scoop out. That's all I'm doing is scooping out from here and scooping out. especially for people that have, you know, back problems that, you know, that have really injured themselves from sitting down too long or lifting something heavy. Usually these right here, right along the spine, and I felt something there, and, you know, and th you put the bevel tool at a 45 degrees. It's not straight up. I'm not doing this. I'm laying it down and just scooping out all the way down. And I can also use it like for in between, let's say, let's say the iliacostalis, let's say she's got pain in between her ribs here, you know, so I can go in between. People that have problems even with, uh, with breathing, you want to, you know, this is perfect for really getting into the intercostals, and the uh, iliacostalis and the longissimus and the semispinalis. And this one too, this is more like, oh, even for the QL. If you can see the multifidi originates, you know, lower by the, by the sacrum. So you can go to the soft area. You've got to be real careful with a floating rib right here. There's a floating rib and then the iliac crest. So right at the meaty part, you can really get under, underneath here to the multifidi and the, uh, the QL. The QL is also a very deep muscle, quadratus lumborum, which is, you know, you, this is like a little thumb here. But these are some of the things that you can do. And this is obviously for bigger muscles, you know, like somebody, you've got a bulky person that you might need a little bit, you know, more pressure. She's a little, you know, she's thin, so I'm not going to use, I have no need for this one here. But this also really helps to get deep. But another thing that you can do is like pull away pull away from the midline you know, and take it all the way. You can do some skin rolling from the opposite side of the table. You know, it's like you're getting the rotators and the, um, the rotators and the multifidi because they're transverse fibers, okay? So you want to push away from the spine. And this is very specific work, guys, you know, very specific work. And you can use your fingers. I use my fingers a lot. Try to save my thumbs. And I, I do want to turn her sideline to show you the, uh, the fetal flex, because that's another one that you can, you know, really help release some of her back problems. So like I said, these are deep, deep muscles. I also like to come from this side and um, 
if you're going to use your thumbs, make sure your thumbs are next to each other, that you don't go with your thumbs this way, because then you're going against the joint of your thumbs, and that's going to hurt your thumbs eventually. So if you're going to go down the back, and I use my knuckles too, like a fist, so I go next to each other, and I go down, all the way down, and then out. So you go down and out. Down and out. And then I can also move an inch out because I want to now get the, the, you know, the longissimus here. You know, you can do one inch strips from here, go all the way down, one inch strips until you get the iliacostalis too. Iliacostalis because it's, you know, it's on the, on the costals. So these have insertions on all the ribs. So you want to do that on both sides because remember the muscles are on both sides. You can do that on both sides. You know, you can do some separation here. Oh, I heard something pop. So I felt something here a little bit ago. So you can also treat some of the trigger points. If she's got trigger points, you know, go very specific. I like, I love the tools because they save my thumbs, but there's nothing like your hands because you have, you know, uh, sensory receptors on your fingers and you can feel where something is tight. Like I feel something tight right there and I can hold that trigger point. And remember, it's always really good to engage your client to take a deep breath. So if she takes a deep breath, you remind them to inhale. And exhale slowly, and you just hold that trigger point right there. And, you know, and don't go past their pain tolerance, you know, neuromuscular. The ideal number is between a 5 and a 6 on a scale from 1 to 10. You don't want to go anything higher than that because then, you know, the nervous system starts kicking in and protecting itself if you inflict too much pain. That's the beauty that, you know, you've got to remember that you want the muscles to relax, and relaxation begins from the nervous system. So your client needs to be relaxed. So you want to treat each muscle one, in, you know, individual, very specific. This is very specific work, and you can get to them if you work, you know, very detailed. So now I want to show you the spinal flex and the fetal flex. So I'm going to turn her on her side to show you. And of course, you can even do some of the, um, like here right underneath below the, the upper trapezius, you can really work the iliocostalis and the insertions here at the occipital ridge. And on the mastoid process, always work straight across. And this is all I'm doing right here, even on the mastoid process here on, on both sides. You can use knuckles. You can use your knuckles. Transverse, you know, you want to stretch the, the fibers. You want to go and stretch them. I think I showed you that at the beginning. And then I'm going to turn her side. I'm a big fan of doing side work, and I'll show you why. Okay, so now that she's on her side, one of the main ones that I want to show you is the fetal flex. Would you have them flex? Because you know, the extension coming back up is when you engage these muscles. So you remove the pillow. She has a pillow between her knees and another one here, but I'm going to remove this just quickly so that we can do the fetal flex. You start by C7 and you ask your client to flex, 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 continue flexing. See how I'm going right really close to the spinal right here. Okay, come back. And we're going to, you can do this up to about three times, your thumbs, or you can even use your fingers. I like, this is easier for me. So flex, continue flexing, 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 flexing. Very good. And you go all the way down. One more time. Like I said, you can do this three times. My, so you get from C7. Don't go up above C7. Flex. And you can really see her spine. So that's another way to get really close to these muscles here. Let me put the pillow back for you. And from this area here, this is another one here that you can do. You can really get to the erector spinase 
and the transversal spinalis from the sideline and just push away from you. Really, I'm pushing away from the spine, trying to release those insertions. And I feel again, I feel something right here. Does that hurt too much? No. No? What number is that right there? Oh, she's <laughs> is that like a five, six? Like a two. Like two, okay. So it's not too bad. She just closed her eyes and I, you, you got to pay attention. You know, let's see, I'm, I'm watching her because if I'm looking somewhere else, it might be really hurting her. So you always got to keep an eye look on your, on your client. And what I'm doing is I'm pushing away from the midline. And this is another way to get, muscles are different. When you lay them sideways, sideline, it's different. They're laying different. You, like these muscles are a little bit more relaxed. And then from here, you pull towards you. When you're on this side, now you pull towards you and you start separating the fibers of the transversal spinalis and move, start moving an inch out. And another way that you can get here even to the um, QL and the longissimus is you find you get out, you come out about an inch from the, from the spine to the soft meaty part from the sideline, you really have good access here for the uh, QL. Stay away from the floating rib, find the soft, soft spot, it's right here, and you can really get to the QL right here, and the longissimus. The longissimus is long, goes all the way up to the mastoid process, so this is a great way to work. I love sideline position, you know. You can get to the serratus too, even though it's not part of this lesson, but you can, you know, really get to the serratus anterior, you know, this muscle right here. So this is a great way to access more muscles and from different angles, you get to them differently. So make sure that you do sideline. And let me see, I think that's about it, guys. You know, you can do the fetal flex and you can also do some stretching and some transverse and uh, be creative. You can do, a, obviously, effleurage, petrissage, you know, skin rolling, deportment, whatever, you know, helps the client relax. But I'm showing you some specific work, how to get to some trigger points and how to be able to help somebody that has some back issues. So I hope that these techniques help you and that you incorporate them. This is for more specific work to get to the deeper layers of the back. And don't forget to give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, share. I really appreciate that. So until the next time, create a great day.